Welcome back to the Doomsday Show for January 3rd. Hallelujah, and blessed it is to be alive. Of course, it would have been better if Doomsday would have came last night so that we can all stand before the judgment of God and see His glorious light in His throne. But barring that, I'm glad that you've made it back to my show because, after all, Doomsday could happen at any time and you only have a few minutes to figure it out. We're going to talk about asteroids. Everybody talks about asteroids. I know, you're so tired of hearing about Doomsday asteroids. But you know, we had one come close to us. In 1990, the name of it was 1994 XM1. It sounds like one of those radio stations for the satellite radio. But this came a lot before that, and it was on June 14th, 2002. It came whizzing past Earth, less than 30,000 miles away. That's between here and the moon. And guess what? You would think scientists would have seen it. They didn't. They didn't get found out about it until June 17th, 2002. Look it up. It's a true thing. And that one, if they would have hit, they said it wouldn't have caused great devastation. It would only took them out of continent. See, Doomsday can come on smaller scales sometimes. They don't have to take out everybody all at once. And each repetitive doom brings on a greater doom. You have to understand that, you know, like viruses take out people. Well, then, you know, the tsunami hit, took out people, then diseases followed, and things like that happen. So you understand, even if they took out a small continent, it would still be God's will. Because you have to understand, when God created the heaven and earth out of six days, he built it with clockwork precision. Everything works together. You, know, you put Mercury where it is, Venus where he is, Earth, Mars. And just to show his sort of understanding of the universe, he named them after other people's gods. After all, they're less than he is, right? What does he care? They're all dead anyway. We don't go around talking about Mount Olympus anymore, do we? My gosh, you'd think pagans would be around if that happened. Hallelujah, blessed be. But the truth is, he put all these things called asteroids. And they go around and around and around. And occasionally they hit things. And then he has the other one called comets that come flying by. Full of ice and snow and water. And not too long ago, one called Schumacher Levy hit Jupiter. If it would have hurt Earth, it would have caused a storm the size of Africa on the planet. And it would have caused winds of over 600 miles an hour. And it would have done it 21 times because it broke up into so many different pieces. And we would have just been scoured off the face of the Earth like nothing, just that fast. A few days. Just long enough for the last of the repentant sinners to say, God, forgive me. But then we've got another one coming. 2028. Optimistic scientists believe we'll be around then. And if we are, we'll be able to face this one called 1997, that's when they discovered it, XF-1411. Sounds like a fighter jet. Fighter jet of God, bringing our inevitable doom. And if it hits, it's another one of those things they call continent cracker. Bam, hits! <laughs> Atmosphere explodes everywhere. If it's an airburst, and it hits the ground, it causes this huge crater setting up something called ejecta. Ejecta is like, kind of like the vomit of Mother Earth when an asteroid hits. And it spews out into the sky. And if the atmosphere didn't get hit so hard and get so heated up that it would just leak out into the void of space, this ejecta will come back onto the Earth and bury everything alive. Plants, Earth, and we could see another sort of catastrophe. And if that one wasn't one, there's even one closer called Apophis. Now this one scares me a little bit, 2029. I hope Doomsday has already come by then because this one really frightens me. Because it's going to come within three lengths of Earth. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to come really close. And some scientists aren't sure that it is going to smack. And you know what they're talking about doing with this? They're talking about firing nuclear weapons at it. And deflecting it. Like anyone can deflect the Earth, you know, the wrath of God and his clockwork mechanisms. And if they do move it, what does it mean to the clockwork of God? What changes? The thought just makes me tremble with anticipation of how God would take his vengeance then. But they're going about firing nuclear weapons to deflect it. First of all, they have to get all those uh, countries to cooperate. China, Russia, Palest uh, Palestinians. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Israelis. Oh, no, neither one of them have the bomb, do they? Um, Pakistan, India, Brazil. Oh, you didn't know that Brazil almost has a bomb. Oh, yeah. South Africa once. 
and they will then fire all their missiles and hopefully they'll all break the atmosphere so they don't fall back to Earth and strike the asteroid. And if it works, they think it'll you know, deflect it like a billboard, like a pool, pool table, like a cue ball, smacking itself against a different way. But if they're wrong, they can break it up into many pieces so they can do even more devastation from over 2 million tons worth of dynamite, or oh, like about 200 Hiroshima's, exploding over our atmosphere. Not only putting meteorites upon us, but vestiges of nuclear fallout. I couldn't imagine a more perfect scenario for absolute destruction of all life on Earth in the oceans everywhere when a nuclear asteroid breaks up and gets sucked in by the Earth's gravity well. That's something to look forward to. 2029. If Doomsday hasn't come by then, we really have a great day there. I'm not predicting the end of the world because that would be a sin because no one knows when the end of the day comes and unexpected things happen. So hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. If not, this is the right Richard Reverizer signing out. And if I don't see you tomorrow, the world's over.